The second to last reaction of glycolysis is mediated by the enzyme enolase. Enolase is an enzyme that makes an enol out of 2-phosphoglycerate. So if you don't remember what an enol is, it's this little fella. A alkene alcohol. Now these usually spontaneously tautomerize into ketones or aldehydes, of course. Um, in this case, it would be an aldehyde. But um, we're going to trap that as a phosphoenol. So you can actually see in the name phosphoenol pyruvate, which is one of our products, that this phosphate here is going to trap this as a phosphoenol. And usually what would happen was some base would come along, pull that hydrogen, we'd swivel to the bond, and then we'd protonate. But nothing can really pull off a phosphate group as easily as that. Not yet, at least. And so we are going to try to trap this in a strained and sterically hindered state in a thermodynamically unfavorable state um, and catch that in for an ATP in the next step, which is pyruvate kinase. So if we need to make an enol, we need to generate a water to make the alkene. Now the alkene is going to go here, so we have a conjugated system. Uh, we need to get rid of this H and this OH. Those are the pieces of our dehydration reaction. Those two are going to go. So the first step we need to do is to pull the hydrogen. Now this is an alpha hydrogen, which means that it's one bond, one carbon away from a double bond oxygen, so carbonyl alpha carbon. Um, it's, this hydrogen is a little bit more acidic because of the inductive effect pulling electron density into this carboxyl group, and especially through coordination of these magnesiums. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to pull that hydrogen off with our lysine, deprotonated lysine. And that bond is going to become a double bond and push charge up onto an oxygen. Now we've seen this numerous times before. The reason that we can swivel this is because it develops charge on oxygen, which is always favorable. Oxygen likes negative charge, and so developing a system where negative charge is generated is very favorable. So now you can see the intermediate we've formed, a double bond O. It actually has three alcohols on it, so this is pretty unstable. And all we need to do is uh, get these oxygens to reform the carbonyl to kick off this OH group down here. That's the other part of our water. Here's one, their hydrogen, and the OH is going to come off here. It's actually going to leave using this hydrogen, and then we're going to recycle it so this hydrogen goes back over here. Um, so the next step here is to reform our carbonyl, then to push this bond out to kick off the leaving group. So reformation of the carbonyl leads to a swiveling of the double bond to this position. The OH leaves and becomes protonated at the same time, and then our glutamate gets its charge back, gets a charge back onto the oxygen. So now you can see we are trapped as a phosphoenol. Uh, pulling off this phosphate is going to be enough to generate a ketone, which is favorable all on its own. Um, and in the next step, we'll be able to actually make an ATP based on the high energy of this compound. This is actually one of the highest energy compounds, the hydrolysis free energy. Is negative 62.2 kilojoules per mole, which is enough to make two ATP at you know 35 kilojoules per mole. Approximately two ATP. That's a that's a very high energy compound. So we're going to catch that in the next step. You can also see our water has left. That is part of the balance equation here. This guy can now, this phosphoenol pyruvate can now float away. The only thing we need left to do is just to even out the charges and put it back to the reset uh, starting state. So our glutamate is going to pull a hydrogen off of our lysine and we will finish the reaction. And now we are reset back to our starting position, protonated glutamic acid and deprotonated lysine.